Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today we have another video for those of you that have a supercharger. If you guys know our channel, you know we installed a supercharger on Sean's 2002 third gen 4Runner. People have been asking, are you guys going to do anything else with this supercharger? Are you going to do the seventh injector or meth injection or blah, blah, blah? Well, we haven't done anything yet up until today. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how to rebuild the nose cone on one of these superchargers. Pretty much that's the one item that needs to be renewed and maintained that things can go bad like a couple bearings, a seal. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to get that nose cone off the supercharger first. Then we're going to show you how to disassemble everything by using a press and getting the old bearings off and the new bearings on and it all back together and back onto the supercharger on his vehicle. Since Sean did most of the research for this job, I am now gonna turn it over to him so he can explain everything that's necessary to purchase to do this job and give you some other information that he knows. So here's Sean. So we got a lot of parts laid out here and through my research, there's a lot of great write-ups and some videos that we reference. So we're not the originators of this. Many people have done this before. This is just gonna be our take on how to rebuild it. I have some different props over here and we have a supercharger already off the vehicle. We have a couple nose cones already off the vehicle and then we have all the parts to rebuild your nose cone. One part that I have here is a genuine part from Toyota, from TRD, that is the entire nose cone assembly. The part number is PTR29-35042. And that would include an entire nose cone assembly, already rebuilt, new bearings, everything that you would need to do, and what we're gonna show you here today, and the oil and the gasket sealer and everything you would need to complete that process. So I purchased a kit that includes all the necessary components to rebuild the nose cone. We'll need to refresh the supercharger oil. So this GM or AC Delco supercharger oil works just fine. The next thing included in this kit is some Permatex anaerobic gasket maker. And that's what we're gonna use to seal the surface of the nose cone back to the supercharger assembly. They also give you a coupler so this kind of hard plastic piece that goes on the backside. We have some bearings. So the bearings themselves is possibly what's gonna be going wrong here. Also the coupler. So it's good to refresh those bearings when you're replacing this. But sometimes people just get away, especially with the oil kit that TRD sells with just the coupler itself and some new oil. So that might be the route you go. They also give us a new double lip nose cone seal and some of the older ones are metal looks like this one's kind of like your typical seal like a hard plastic something of that nature they give us a nose cone rotoclip and this is a pretty good replacement over the original wire retaining clip the kit also comes with these needle bearings which are for the rotors inside the supercharger which we are not going to replace in this video we would have to take the entire supercharger off in order to remove the rotors and we're not gonna focus on that in this video. They also give us a nose cone shaft lock nut, and then they also give you a syringe. We have two syringes here, a big boy and the one that came with the kit. So we're gonna play around with both and see which one works best. So like I mentioned, what I have here is a supercharger drive assembly replacement, genuine from Toyota. You can also call this the nose cone assembly replacement. And what this kit comes with is a completely rebuilt nose cone here in the plastic and it also comes with the necessary items to seal it the coupler some oil a new drain screw um, and everything that comes with that kit and the other thing we have here is a new drive belt for the supercharger so that's the part number for the belt there as well so like i mentioned one thing that we're not going to replace is these needle bearings now with this particular version of this fourth generation or second generation black supercharger we have one of the bearings kind of exposed back here and this one might be able to be pressed out it might scratch the surface right here and no big deal we're not going to focus on replacing these needle bearings in this video but hopefully you see something from us in the future to address these bearings back here all right so we're going to try to get some of the stuff out of the way 
So we can get to these bolts and then pry away the nose cone assembly of a 12 millimeter. This top little bolt right here. All right, so that's loose. We put the bolt back in there so we don't lose it. Could grab this little air hose over here. It's just a little clip right here. Get this air hose off, camera's in the way. So this hose right here, we just took off the air box. Then I'm gonna get this clip right here so I can free these spark plug wires. Okay, so we got that little clip off right there. We're just gonna unclip these. Clip this guy. Just kind of try to loosen it up a little bit. All right, now we got a little wiggle room. We have our 3 8 inch ratchet here. This is gonna help us get onto the dynamic tensioner and pull it back enough to get the belt off. All right. You can see that the dynamic tensioner is specifically made with a 3 8 inch ratchet connection to where you can take the tension off the dynamic tensioning pulley so you can get the belt free. So it's made specifically to use with a 3 8 ratchet. So we're gonna remove this drain fill plug here. It's a 3 16 Allen head. We have our gear wrench, quarter inch ratchet, little extension, and we're just gonna release this. It's not on there very tight, shouldn't be at least. We'll get a rag ready in case something drips out here. But it should just be filled right to that point from when we did it last. Yeah, it's all good. All right, we're at a little bit of an angle here, so maybe that's preventing it from spilling out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our syringe, we're gonna stick the little tube in there and try to remove as much fluid as possible. We can't get all of it, but when we start to remove these bolts and we separate the nose cone from the supercharger assembly, we're gonna get some leakage there as well. So we're just trying to get as much out as possible to avoid any significant messes. So the syringe that comes with the kit comes with this hose right here. And what we found is putting this hose into this hole is fine, but it doesn't really curve down in there to a point to where it could even even grab any of the oil. We have this more flexible vacuum hose that we rigged up to it. And even that, has a little bit more flexibility to get in there, but even so, it's not gonna get much oil out. Uh, it looks like it didn't pull any out. So we're not gonna remove any oil through this hole. We're just gonna let it drip down and just clean up our mess here. This method isn't really effective to take the supercharger oil out of this area here. If you were able to utilize a much smaller syringe like this little 10cc syringe, and you were able to get a little skinnier, more pliable tube, maybe at an auto parts store, then maybe you could slip it in there and make the bend to where it can go down to the base of the nose cone to draw some of the fluid out. But we don't have a little tube to fit onto this smaller syringe. So we're gonna break the connection of the nose cone from the main part of the supercharger and then deal with the mess. We got our 3 8 inch ratchet here with a 10 millimeter. We're gonna go after these 10 millimeter bolts that secure the nose cone to the supercharger assembly. Shouldn't be on there that tight. So this is a little tricky here. I don't have enough room to get down to that bottom bolt right there. The timing cover's in the way. What you could do is take a utility blade. It kind of depends on how much you cut out. Maybe you just cut out a little bit more. We're gonna transition to an extension with a quarter inch ratchet and see if we can get on there. We got this little mini breaker bar here. These bolts are a little tight, so we don't wanna break the ratchet. We're just gonna use this to get it loose and we're gonna transition to the ratchet to get the bolt the rest of the way out. Kind of bend down the timing cover there. There we go. Yeah, pretty stiff. Let's transition to the ratchet now. Our noisy friend is back with his leaf blower. Waiting and waiting for them to stop mowing and stuff. Never happens. So the one we're going after next is right directly below the pulley here. And it's pretty hard to get in there. So what we have is a long 10 millimeter gear wrench, box end wrench. 
And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get on there to just loosen it, and then hopefully we can get a ratchet in there and, and start to get it off with the ratcheting end. So we're gonna try to get in here. It's hard to show you, that's why I wanna show you on the supercharger that's already off the vehicle. Yeah. All right, baby steps. All right, we're loosening it up now. See, probably what we wanna do actually is remove this bolt entirely, and then that's gonna give us freedom to actually turn this in here. So let's go ahead and do that next. Ooh, those are freaking long. That creates an issue because you're not gonna be able to yeah. pull it out of the timing cover area, right? So one thing about these bolts is they're pretty long. And so one thing we're gonna run into down here is it's not gonna be able to actually pull out because the timing cover is gonna be in the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen a lot of these timing cover bolts and just try to pry this away as much as we can to sneak the bolt out. We got this nifty Milwaukee little ratchet. We're gonna use this to zip off those timing cover bolts. Just makes it easier. These bolts are kind of unique with the timing cover, so this is what they look like. I think that gives us uh, quite a bit of play. I'm gonna loosen up this constant tension clamp right here. Just to move that out of the way, just get a little more play out of the timing cover. Yeah, that gives us quite a bit of room to play with. I think that'll be enough. We'll start with that and we'll see where we go. All right, I'm just gonna go after the rest of the nose cone bolts and this Milwaukee makes quick work of that. So we got this reducer, our long extension, and then our 10 millimeter to get on to this little guy over here that's kind of getting obstructed by the timing cover, which now that we loosened it up, it's actually giving us a lot more play and it's gonna be too long of an extension. Let's make a shorter one. All right, put on a shorter one here. Pull that timing cover down, comes right up. Now we're back to this bottom one, it's the last one. Now, obviously, this would be easier if we took the whole supercharger off the motor, but then that's a lot of work in itself. So that's why we're doing these extra steps of releasing the timing cover bolts a little bit and using different tools in our toolbox to be able to keep the supercharger on the engine. The instructions from TRD for the replacement nose cone assembly does specify to remove the entire assembly. We're trying to cheat a little bit here and I think we'll get away with it. All right, so we got this last bolt all the way out here. I'm just gonna sneak it down a little bit, just out of the hole. Then we're gonna pull it out. A little finagling, of course. All right, snuck that one out there. One thing to note is that because this has the dynamic tensioner, if the dynamic tensioner wasn't right up against the timing cover right there, we probably could pull it back a little bit more and get a little bit more room to work. If we took the time to remove the dynamic tensioner and then also remove the two lower bolts that affix the timing cover to the front of the engine, we can move that timing cover back way further and give us more room to work. But we seem to have made it work with just what we got. Now we're ready to pry off the nose cone by using a OTC pry bar. You could use a big screwdriver or whatever you got. So there's two areas that you can pry against and the silver thing back here is for the roto pack, and this first area here is going to be to pry off just the nose cone assembly. So let's see how this is. Ooh, oh, oh, it's spilling everywhere. All right, let's pull this thing away here. It's spilt out. I'm trying to clean up the mess. So what Sean is doing is he's actually just twisting the pry bar to get it some separation. So now it's free of the dowels. Lyman dowels. And there it is. So be forewarned, we did make a mess. Once we cracked it, the oil came out. So if you can source a small little syringe with a long enough tube that can get down into here to where you can suck out a lot of the oil, you'll make much less of a mess than we did. One thing I'm noticing right now is that there's no gasket sealer on here. It looks like it was just put on there. We can see a little gasket sealer in the bolt holes, but nothing really along the surface here, which is interesting. So that's weird, but whatever. So we gotta get this pulley off the end of the nose cone. 
and you know typically probably want to use an impact but just zip it right off but we're gonna try another method here just to see if this works we have a 18 millimeter deep socket i'm gonna put on there one thing to notice is we do show about two threads sticking out and it's hard to see through the plastic but this one also shows approximately two threads sticking out so we're gonna try to use that as a gauge to get it back on and nice and tight so the reason why we're showing you the method without the impact gun is in case you don't own an impact gun. So what this is, is a strap wrench. You can use these things for a lot of different applications, but the way it works is you slip over the rubber strap, grabbing the pulley, you suck out all the slack, it cams onto the strap, and then you can hold it firm this way, so then you can release tension on the bolt. There it goes, it worked. I think it's coming off stiff the whole way, huh? Yeah, a little stiff. Oh yeah, they look like some type of thread locker on there, huh? Or yeah. just dirt. No, no that's thread locker, huh? It's like thread locker. Now we have to use a puller to get this thing off. Am I strong enough to pull it off? <laughs> it actually comes right off. Obviously, if uh, you can, just pull it off with your hand if it's not corroded. But if you had to, we were thinking that we could use a puller. Let me get this back in place and we'll show you how you'd set that up. So what you can do is you can grab a two or three jaw puller. We think a three jaw puller would probably be better to disperse the load equally. You would just get the tines underneath the edges of the lip of the puller on this end, and then you screw the bar right into the shaft. This shaft actually has a dimple to where this spike will actually fit right into it. It fits right in there, so it's kind of nice to center it. So if it was stuck on there really tight, you'd get on here with a socket, start drawing it off just like this. I'm able to do it with my hands because it's not tight. Just like that. You can get these two and three jaw pullers at an auto parts store. You can rent them for free like at O'Reilly's or AutoZone. So you don't necessarily have to buy one if you found that you can't just pull this thing off like I did. So next we're gonna get this wire retaining clip from out of here that kind of secures the seal lightly. And this is from one of our prop nose cones that we practice on. So this is what the retaining clip looks like. But we're gonna be replacing it with this nose cone roto clip. So it's more of like a C-clip and it looks way stronger than this one here. We'll use some snap ring pliers to get it in there once we do that. But this thing's not in here very strong here. So we have this little pick tool, just kind of get in there, pry it out. It was like a no-brainer. So now that this retaining clip is out, we're gonna be pressing this out and removing the shaft from this assembly. And once we press this out down the other side, it's gonna come out like this. Be careful of the spring. And then we're gonna press these items off as well. And so we're gonna show you that. Again, this is our little prop to show you kind of what's involved and what we're gonna be pressing out. So we got our nose cone assembly over here by our press. As you can see here, we got it set up to drive it out the back end. What you wanna make sure is that you have enough room for the assembly to fall through and not get stuck on something here. So we have these press plates that are going to allow us a space for it to fall through. So we're gonna line everything up and then start pressing. Just so you know, the press that we're using is a Harbor Freight 20 ton press and these press plates come with the kit. So we're gonna tighten this bottle jack valve here so we have some tension so we can press down and we're gonna kinda get it down with our fingers, get it close. Line it up again right there in the middle and we'll start pressing this out. If you're by yourself, you'd want to be kneeling one hand on the jack handle, the other hand underneath here getting ready to catch the shaft that's going to come out. So there was a little bit of pressure at first, you heard that bang, but the rest was pretty easy. So just like Sean showed earlier with the donor nose comb, the spring goes in this fashion, you have one bearing here, and then you have this other piece. 
So this piece right here, its technical term is the phenolic block, or you can call it a coupler. I'm just using a flat blade screwdriver, getting it in between these two points and just prying up a little bit. And you can see how easily it moves. Now I should be able to get it the rest of the while. Oh, and drop it. Don't do that. This piece just slides on these posts. Now we're gonna have to get this assembly back into the press and we're gonna press off these two pieces off this shaft. So this is our setup. We have our press sleeve kit that we've used many times. The diameter is resting on this bearing right here pretty nicely. We're gonna be using this particular socket, nine millimeters. It's gonna be the right diameter for this shaft right here to be pressed through this guy and the bearing. And another thing you wanna take note of is that this is going to be able to have free movement through this area. It doesn't need to move all the way, and that's where the height of this is gonna help, but it needs to go through a little bit. As we can see, the shaft of this is already poking out, so it needs a little room to move. So just so you know, this puck comes with the press leaf kit. You get two pucks and you get a bunch of different press leaves, and we'll put a link in the video description of the kit that we own. All right, so we're just gonna slide this on. We're gonna kind of fit it in here and we're gonna set up our little socket and just try to get everything lined up really nice and perfect before we start pressing. All right, looks good so far. Now what we learned from the first one we did is that this is gonna have a little bit of pressure. It's gonna give us a little bit of a bang and then it's gonna slide out pretty easily. It's important you get this lined up pretty square here. You don't want to be pressing on the wrong part. All right, let's let it rip. We can get some safety glasses on just in case. Safety first. Ooh, got off a little bit there. A lot of it actually. Let's readjust here. It looks a little better. All right, it got off a little bit there. A little bit more pressure than the other one we did. There it is. All right, and it fell right through there. Let's take a look. We'll get our socket out. This little guy, our bearing, and our shaft. The next step is to press out this seal on top and the bearing that's right below it. So we pulled from our sleeve kit again that we'll link in the video description. And what we need to make sure is that the sleeve fits perfectly on this area, but doesn't overlap. So there's enough room for the seal and the bearing to fall out. So we're gonna flip this over, put this on top, make sure it's nice and square there. And then what we got is a 22 millimeter impact socket. When we were watching this other guy's lead, he flipped it around and it's gonna be pressing on the opposite end of the socket because it's more of a flat end and it's gonna give more surface area to actually press the bearing through. Put this down in there. I'm line this up. Kinda of check it out here. Let's go and press it. Super easy. It is a press fit, but it's a very mellow one. So what we have here remaining is we pressed out the bearing and the seal that covers it right here. So we have the bearing and then the little metal seal, which in the kit, they don't give us a, a metal seal, they give us a different type, but it's a seal nonetheless. All right, so now we're ready to press our new bearing in. In order to lubricate the sides a little bit, we're just gonna take some of our supercharger oil and lubricate outside of the bearing, inside of here. So if you notice when you take this out, there's actually a stopping point for the bearing. What you'll do is you'll just continue to press until it kind of loads up and then you'll stop. So we'll rest it in there. We're gonna get our press sleeve. Fits the outer diameter of the bearing pretty good. Our little cap. And we're gonna press that in. The reason why we're using this size press sleeve rather than something else is when you're pressing in bearings, you wanna apply the force to the outer race and not the inner race. If you applied force to the inner race, you would destroy the bearing. So by applying force on the outer race, you're not gonna do any damage when pressing the bearing into the supercharger housing. Okay, go down. All 
All right, so it was really easy to press in, and now I have a fair amount of force, so I think that's about good. Let's release it, take a look. You could basically look into the back side and see if the bearing is fully seated on that inner lip, and I could see that it definitely is. Now we need to press the bearing and this little coupler adapter thing back onto the shaft. And in order to do this, we're gonna lube up the shaft and the inside diameter of these items. And to give a little wiggle room for the shaft to fit through the end here, you can kind of see the wear mark here or the discoloration. And that's the difference of the amount of it sticking out of this component right here. So we just got a 17 millimeter socket just to give it a little bit of room when we press down on it. We're gonna lube this up, lube up the inside. We got some splines here on the end of the shaft and we got some splines on the end of this component. And we're hoping it lines up because we don't really have the opportunity to press it down far enough to allow the splines to line up. We're just gonna do our best here. Give it the old college try, eh? We're gonna put our socket on top If you take a look at your shaft when you have yours off, you'll notice that there's a portion of the shaft that is a larger diameter, so that's really where the bearing's gonna naturally stop. We actually have our friend Jordan here and he gave us the correct terminology. That's called a shoulder. So we're gonna press it down to the shoulder. I'm going slow just to feel it out. Is it moving? It's going, yeah, it's, you're almost there. Ooh, is it loading up? It's loading up. Okay, that means the splines weren't perfectly lined up, but there's no way to know, so, unless it's just getting tighter at the very top. We didn't press it on enough, so we put it back in. We just wanted to take a quick look-see, see what was going on over there. Bearing still has a little bit more ways to go, but it was getting a little tough because of the splines, we imagine. Oh, it wasn't that much. Yeah. It wasn't that much, I, I don't know why. We hit a little bit more resistance than we thought we would because it was going smooth, smooth, smooth. And then when it got to the point where this piece with the female splines going over the male splines of the shaft, it seemed that the press loaded up a bit and we're thinking like, oh, wow, we're now we're maybe messing up the splines. But it just took a little bit more force. And I think what happened is the splines kind of corrected themselves, lined up, and then now we have this bearing bottomed out on the shoulder of the shaft and we're done pressing these parts on. You can see by looking underneath here, the inner race is bottomed out on this shoulder. All right, so now we're gonna press this shaft into the nose cone housing. And what's gonna be important is that we support the bearing that we already pressed in. So in order to do that, we're gonna use a 21 deep impact socket that's gonna allow this to kind of come through. It's not gonna come through all the way, but we need to support the inner race of the bearing that's already pressed inside the housing here. So we're gonna have that. And then we're gonna use a 17 millimeter again, just to press on this side. So it clears this area and gets as much surface area on this little coupler adapter thing. So we already lubed up the... All right, so we messed up. What we were doing right before we cut is we put the spring into the end of the nose cone and we inserted our shaft. When we use the 21 millimeter socket to give space for the shaft to go into, we ended up getting the end of the splines stuck in the end of the 21 millimeter socket. Now the video that we followed used a 21 millimeter socket just like we did. But for some reason, his 21 millimeter socket had enough opening at the end so that the splines didn't get stuck in the end of the socket. Unfortunately, ours did. So we had to press this off. That took a little time. And then when we pressed it off, we noticed that the threads were mashed a little bit. So what we had to do is we had to retap them. And in the process of retapping them, little metal shards got into the open bearing then that kind of ruined the bearing. We tried to clean it out, but it wasn't feeling right when we were spinning it, and we knew that it was a throwaway at that point. We just needed to get new bearings. So now we have a longer 22 millimeter. In a perfect world, we would have had a 21, 
But at any event, this is going to allow plenty of room for the end of this shaft to fit through so that the splines don't make contact with the end of the socket. So if you follow our lead in the order of pressing the components back onto the nose cone, if you start with the shaft first, it's going to be obvious that you're going to have the right or the wrong bearing. But if you start with the nose cone assembly first, you'll want to make sure that the bearing you choose has the larger inner diameter for this component right here. The bearing with the smaller inner diameter is going to go on to the shaft component as we see it right here. So the larger one just, you know, it will be all loose on there. So don't make that mistake. All right, we're back at the press and we're going to try this again. Hopefully not mash up the threads now that we got a super duper long socket. So the setup is, again, put the spring in. We're going to put the shaft in. We're going to use our 17 millimeter socket again to support. And then we're going to use our long socket, super long. The purpose of this socket is to make sure that we can support the inner race of the bearing as this shaft right here pushes through the bearing. So we're supporting the inner race the shaft is pressing through the bearing and it's going to want to put some pressure on the inner race of the bearing so this here is going to prevent it from getting pushed up and maybe messing up the bearing. And now we're going to line it up with the inner race of the bearing on top and we're going to do our press work. An extra set of hands would be ideal for this so you're getting your long 21 millimeter socket squared up with the inner race really well. So as Sean's holding the socket and the housing, I'm gonna go down with the press and get some contact. How's that looking, Sean? Looking pretty good. Once you've determined that you have a good contact of the socket with the inner race, everything looks nice and squared up, that's when you start applying more force to drive the shaft through this outer bearing. It should be really smooth. That seems to be pretty good loaded up. You wanna check that out? Just screw it over here. Take a look-see here. Seems to be happy here. You know, we just can't catch a break over here, but in a perfect world, we would have had a piece of pipe that has no little hangups. You can see on the inside here, right where that little nick is, this key here just barely made contact with the inside of that socket. Just the way the socket was manufactured, it has a little bit of material on the inside, maybe to strengthen it or something like that, but it just nicked it ever so slightly. Not a big deal, but definitely be careful and try to use the appropriate socket or get the right diameter pipe. The reason why we're sharing this stuff with you is because we want you to learn from our mistakes and not make the same mistake, hopefully. So on a lot of these jobs, like this one, this is our first time doing it and it's a learning process. We just realized that having the right length socket and then just paying attention how well you square up the socket with the inner race is gonna make a difference so you don't end up doing something like this, like scoring the keyway just a little bit. So this is the old seal. We're about to put the new one in. The kit that I got came with this I don't know, neoprene, it's not just all metal, but it's definitely hard. And we're gonna put it in next. There's gonna be a natural stopping point inside here. So we're just gonna push it on until it makes contact here and then it stops naturally. We're gonna lube up the inside here a little bit, some supercharger oil, just to give it a nice opportunity to slide in. All right, so I gave it a little bit of force and I'm pressing it in by hand just to get it started. It's a little tough. Now that we got it started by hand pretty good, you could use a brass drift if that's all you have, but we have this nice press sleeve kit, so we're gonna use that instead, primarily because it fits the inner diameter here of the nose cone and the outer diameter of the seal pretty perfectly here. So this is gonna make contact on all sides at the same exact time. We got the plastic mallet here, and we're gonna drive it in. So it's a little bit of a tight fit. The press sleeve is definitely your friend in getting this pushed in or driven in evenly. 
And now we see a little bit of that lip here. We see the lip where our retaining clip is going to go. You'll also notice that the shaft here is sticking out about two to three millimeters outside of the seal. So we got a pair of Nipix snap ring pliers. We'll put these in the video description. And just to show you what the previous retaining clip looked like, it was kind of janky. It's just, so I guess you could put that back in there if you wanted. But the kit that I got gives us this nice sturdy clip. So we're gonna use this. There we go. We got the nose cone assembly in the vise. We got these soft jaws to protect the housing here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna push on the stock pulley back onto the shafts, uh, being mindful of the key here. With that said, what we noticed is that we can press this on all the way, just push it on with brute force, if you will. And the way that this is designed is that this portion will make contact with the end of the shaft, uh, preventing it from going all the way on and potentially having this surface grind against the surface of the nose cone assembly. So we're gonna push it on. Line up the key there, it slid on pretty good because we greased it up with some supercharger oil. All the way down, you heard it click. Just rotate it a little bit, make sure that it has clearance, which it does. And then we're gonna put the old nut back on just to show you. The question that we just answered for ourselves is that there's no way to get the pulley on too far to where the pulley will be grinding on the end of the nose cone housing. It has a stop and you can't get it past that stop so you don't have to worry about getting it on too far. And so that was a question we had that we now know the answer of. You can't get it on too far. The reason we were questioning if we can get this on too far is because at one of our mod subscriber appreciation days, we had somebody that recently rebuilt their supercharger nose cone assembly and they somehow were making contact with this pulley somehow. So the only thing I think could have happened is they didn't press on the shaft accordingly within the bearings and somehow it wasn't, it wasn't pushed out all the way allowing for that natural stop to be where it needs to be in order to naturally stop this pulley. So now we explain that, we're gonna get our new nut, a little bit of blue Loctite just to give ourselves some extra insurance, because again, this does have a nylon end, and tighten it on there until it makes contact, and we're gonna figure out what kind of torque spec we wanna go with. All right, should be good. I'm gonna spin the nut on to the shaft here and the nylon's gonna give us some resistance. Tim has this secured, got a little blue Loctite in here, we're gonna tighten the nut. What we found online is anywhere between 20 and 38 foot-pounds. We're gonna split the difference and go to 30 foot-pounds and see how it feels. What we have here is an 18 millimeter deep socket so that when we get it tight, the threads don't get stuck in the socket or bottom out and prevent us from tightening it on the way. All right, here's the resistance. You ready? All right. There it went. That was 30 foot-pounds. And we see that it's pretty much where the other nut was. There was two threads exposed before we took it apart, and there's now two threads exposed with a new nut on there. But one thing to note is that the previous nut does sit a little bit higher if you get down here so the nuts aren't identical and that's also something to consider as well but we got it to a torque spec so should be good and it's still smooth which is nice we just want to revisit our mess we made when we pulled the nose cone assembly off the supercharger what we have here is a 10 cc syringe and with this syringe we have this windshield washer hose which allowed us the needed flexibility to actually go into this area to suck out some of the fluid. This is something we had to purchase after the fact. The hose that comes with these syringes, especially in the kit that I purchased, is too darn stiff. It's, there's no way it's going to be able to suck out any significant amount of fluid. What we did is we stuck it through the fill port, and when we stick it through the fill port, we need to ensure that it snakes around underneath here it gets to this area. Now it's a little tricky. You gotta have to finesse it a little bit. 
but if you get it in that fill hole and you snake it around here you're able to get a significant amount of fluid avoiding a mess it still made a little bit of a mess when we broke it free again but definitely less significant than the first time around the size of the window washer fluid is 764 we got this right from our local o'reilly store and what sean was saying once the hose goes through the fill hole it's either going to make a trajectory going downward or upward and you could kind of tell just by looking at the direction the hose is going if it starts going upward obviously it's not going to work you have to just keep on trying to where you can sense that it's going down below the gears and then by drawing back on the syringe and you start drawing out fluid you know that the end of the tube is in the fluid and you've gotten to where you need to get and so you just keep on repeating that process until you can't get any more fluid out so now we're going to align the nose drive gear pins with the openings on the phenolic block we're going to press the block into position here there'll be a little plastic mallet persuasion here you can see some of that grease squirting out It looks like it's pretty well seated on there. When we actually go ahead and tighten all the bolts to the supercharger assembly, that should suck it in a little bit more if it requires it. So you can see the way it's made, it's got six holes. Three of the holes are going through the pins on the nose cone. The other three holes are gonna be capturing the gear on the main part of the supercharger. So we just got done applying the anaerobic Permatex gasket maker, as you can see here. And now we're gonna put the assembly back onto the housing of the supercharger and secure the bolts. Before we put the Permatex on the surface of the nose cone assembly and also the surface here we're looking at on the supercharger assembly, we clean the surface with some denatured alcohol just so we have a nice surface so that it adheres to it. So we have our nose cone assembly here and we're gonna line it up with the dowels and also turn the shaft a little bit so that the phenolic block fits in on these splines, on these gears here. I'm kind of helping Sean from up above to let him know that the studs are lined up with the phenolic block. It's lined up right there. Oh, there we go. So we finessed the nose cone assembly back onto the supercharger housing. And there's a dowel here and a dowel here where we see the current ends of the bolts in. And we had to wiggle it a little bit just to line it up. Looks like this side was pushed in a little bit, so it's a little bit cocked. And we just kind of shimmied it in there. It slid in pretty good, almost all the way here, so we can get these bolts in. One thing I'd like to mention is when we were doing this last time, we took the nose cone end off of my other supercharger just so that I could drive home. But when we took the bolts out, we noticed that this location and this location where the bolts are currently screwed into had a longer bolt. So just keep that in mind when you're removing your nose cone assembly. You might have different length bolts. This particular supercharger had all the same length bolts, but my other one had two that were slightly longer in this location and this location. So now we're just gonna get the rest of our bolts secured in the housing, just kind of hand tight, and then we're gonna torque them down to 20 foot-pounds. The other thing we're gonna be mindful of is we're gonna leave these two out right now, or at least this bottom one, because this very bottom bolt location, right at the bottom right here, right underneath this pulley, is extremely hard to get to, and with this sticking out, it makes it almost impossible to tighten. So we're gonna leave this one out until we tighten the rest, and then this probably is gonna be the last one we tighten here. So we're gonna get this bottom one in first. You obviously have choices. If you followed our lead and didn't wanna actually have to remove the dynamic tensioner so you could then get this timing belt cover back far enough to where you have more room to work, that's why we're having a little bit of difficulty getting to this bottommost bolt because the timing cover is in our way. We're being a little lazy, but we're making it work. All right, so we got all of the bolts in threaded by hand first, then we tightened them down until they started to touch, then started bringing them up to the torque spec, 
with the exception of this one down here. We started to get them to the torque spec of 20 foot pounds. We got this one at the torque spec and we kind of used this as a gauge to understand how tight it really was. So we could transfer that down to this bottom one, which we then secured with this ratcheting wrench. We couldn't get a torque wrench in there. So now we're gonna go with the rest of the bolts and get them to 20 foot pounds and then we'll be done. Okay, that one hit. That one hit. That one hit. That one hit. And that one hit. We just have one more bolt we need to do because we had to leave this one out in order to get the wrench in to get that bottom one that's uh, pretty well hidden down there. Always start these by hand. I almost get it all the way in by hand here. We're gonna transition to our gear wrench ratchet, 3 8 with the 10 millimeter on here. All right, back to the torque wrench. There it is. 20 foot pounds all around. So now we gotta fill the nose cone up with some supercharger oil. The net contents of this container is 118 milliliters. What is required as far as the capacity of the cavity in here is 120 milliliters. So one container is slightly short. We're gonna need one container and about a sneeze extra. So if you were to find some kind of supercharger kit like I did, the amount of oil that they give you is the correct amount, but if you can measure out 120 milliliters or if you can fill it up on level ground till it starts to spill out a little bit, that should suffice as well. So the syringe that was included in the kit is the one we're gonna use, not our other little one that we used to draw out the fluid like we showed you a moment ago. So we're gonna use the contents of this entire bottle and then a tiny bit extra from another one. Be careful, you're sucking this stuff up. Okay, I'm gonna stop right about there. Use my finger. And we'll press it in. We're gonna get the rest out here. We're just gonna keep on filling it up. Looks good. Pulled the plunger out. I'm gonna try to pour whatever's left, not much. And a little bit, two milliliters to be exact, whatever that is. Boop. All right, we're calling that two milliliters. We're gonna get our plug in here, 3 16 Allen head. And there is an O-ring on there, so when you take it out, just be sure that the O-ring is still intact. There's gotta be a torque spec somewhere out there in the world, but just get it tight, you'll survive. He was just choking up on a little quarter inch ratchet, so not a lot of force applied. If you followed our lead just to get to some of these bolts that secure the nose cone assembly to the housing of the supercharger, and you took the timing cover bolts out, these are 80 inch pounds, but we're just gonna get them nice and snug. We're not gonna show getting these all in and tight because if you took them out, we know that you can get them back in. You can do it. You can we got our timing cover bolts back in. Now I'm gonna put this constant tension clamp for the radiator hose back in place because that allowed us a little bit of freedom to peel the timing cover back so we could get to those bottom bolts. So we're gonna put this back where it belongs. Ah, oh, it's happy place. So you could see again, we're utilizing a 3 8 ratchet to get onto the dynamic tensioner. I'm gonna turn it towards the passenger side and then that's gonna give room to slip the belt on. Just like that. Make sure it's all lined up nicely with the alternator and then release tension and bring it back in place. And that's all there is to it. So we got our spark plug wires clipped back on. We got this little bracket that holds these back in place. Got the battery back on, so everything should be ready to go for us to start her back up. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we're not gonna hear any loud grinding sounds. It sounds a lot different than before, that's for sure. All right, we're done with this job. 
we just replaced the components inside the nose cone assembly. And we learned some things, like we always do. We learned that not all sockets are created equal. And that when the end of the shaft got stuck into the end of the socket, that kind of uh, threw us for a loop there. But that's okay, we got back on our feet and we ordered some new bearings and we got it done right. Throughout this video, we shared some of our tips and tricks and the problems that we ran into. We're only human and we want you to learn from our mistakes so that you don't have to crash and burn like us and order some new bearings and wait two weeks to finish your project, which has been a bummer. Luckily, I had extra supercharger components because I like to go vroom vroom and we were able to get me back on the road and I was able to come back after I got the correct parts, the bearings themselves. So like you saw in the video, we ran into some problems when it came to the press work. So it's really important that you double and triple check your clearances to make sure that nothing's gonna get st stuck onto whatever you're pressing with. Again, in a perfect world, we would have had some kind of cylinder, some kind of pipe that we could have used that wouldn't have got hung up and it would have been the right depth to not cause us any problems. We also found out that when you press everything on correctly, the pulley itself will bottom out at a certain point so you don't have to worry about pushing that on too far. That was also something we learned. We also learned that there are some types of superchargers that have different length bolts, and so that's important to keep in mind. And we also showed you some extra techniques with the syringe, so you could get a little bit more of the supercharger oil out so it doesn't just spill all over your engine, because it can be quite a mess. So what's next for the supercharger? Well, I want to fix some pinging issues that I have at low boost, high RPMs, and that's really gonna require some type of tuning, and more importantly, the seventh injector. So we have plans to install that. Now, you noticed us use some specialty tools in this video, and if you've watched any of our other videos, you'll know that we use our press quite a bit, our 20-ton Harbor Freight press. We also use the press sleeve kit, which we've also used in a variety of different videos over the years. So although these are some initial investments, they're really good investments if you want to be a DIY mechanic yourself. These are going to be really crucial tools to have in your arsenal to get the job done correctly. With all that said, we hope you've enjoyed this iteration of the nose cone rebuild here where we replace the components internally, take it off the supercharger, put it back on. We'll be back with more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Sick mods, sick TRD superchargers, and we'll see you next time, guys.